today is pretty much a day about salvation. Not only with the baptism. Baptism doesn't save us. It's a, a sign of our salvation. We heard earlier about the saving of babies' lives. But where are we in our salvation? And do we recognize how highly prized it is? As we've been going through this study in 1 Peter, I hope you realize how valuable it is. It is our reason for living. It is our encouragement when things get difficult because of the hope that lies in it for you and me. The thing is, we should really value it, but if not, we should be even all the more encouraged by what our three little verses this morning told about at least two other parties who are interested in our salvation. We'll look at the last one mentioned first. In verse 12 of chapter 1, the last sentence, even angels long to look into these things. Angels. Why would they be concerned about salvation? They didn't sin. They're holy. They are part of creation. They're not eternal like God. But because the Father loves us and pours out His love for us, it's got the angels all curious. What is the Father going to do for this beloved creation which has rejected Him? So they are in heaven and in the world around us watching on. They are like the cheerleaders, or, or the audience, I should say, at a ball game, watching on. Maybe bringing messages what for us to do or something, but they are watching, cheering us on. How do we know this? Luke 15, first four or five verses, it talks about, I would try to look at it with my eyes and the small print, it ain't going to work. <laughs> the first parable that Jesus talks about is the lost sheep. The shepherd leaves 99 to go hunt for that one lost one. And he comes back carrying it on his shoulders and tells his friends, and they are excited. They're ecstatic. But then Jesus ends it with the idea. Even the angels in heaven rejoice over the salvation of one lost soul. Mm -hmm. Salvation isn't for them. It doesn't really pertain to them. But they care about it for you. They are rejoicing over salvation. So why aren't we? Scary thought. We don't care about our own lives what the angelic realm does. But then there's another view. It's also a good view. It's one where I would consider more if we go with this race analogy, which I talked with the kids about. It's more instead of just a marathon, it's a baton pass off. Talking about the predecessors before us, specifically the prophets. They saw what lied ahead. If we are running that mountain race, they looked ahead. And they saw a mountain peak, a couple mountain peaks. And in it, they knew the glory of God's kingdom. And they were heading towards it, but it was far off. Oh, what a great day it would be when God's people would be at His holy temple and the world would be all right. But they also look at that peak at other times and they also saw a sign of a suffering Messiah. How could these two images be in the same thing? Suffering and rejoicing. They were perplexed. They were always looking. We are told in these verses 
that they were inquiring of it. And it helps if I'm not in Jeremiah, but First Peter. <laughs> that they were certain, they spoke about for us, and they were careful and they were searching very hard with great care to find out about the salvation. They knew God's day was coming. But they also knew it seemed like it was distant. It wasn't going to be for them, but they still wanted to know. Thing is, it has come, but not come in fulfillment. Because that one image which they saw, which really confused them more than any, was that suffering Messiah. You see what they saw? Or two mountains, actually, from a distance. They looked from where they were like one mountain with just maybe two peaks. But what the first one went was Calvary. They didn't know the 2,000 years plus before the kingdom of God comes. Mm -hmm. To them, it looked like the same thing was confusing, but they still looked forward to it. Guess what? We live in between those mountains. We look back to Calvary and celebrate. And we look forward to the kingdom of God coming in fulfillment and we celebrate. Amen. We may be in anguish now, but because of the hope that has been secured and the hope that is promised, we rejoice. We take, realize we are headed to the promised land. This suffering is nothing. It's short-lived. But we've got to keep our eyes on the mountains. If we keep our eyes in the valleys, we will be discouraged. We will lose hope. It doesn't mean we'll lose our salvation. But we might, like our lesson with the kids, when a veer to the left or the right, and end up hurting ourselves. Let's stay the course. Work out our salvation by continuing along the path of righteousness, the path of reconciliation, the path of love of God to all mankind. And celebrate every second step of the day. Mm -hmm. Even when the road looks hard and difficult, celebrate. Because you see where we're going. The rest of the world is in a dark haze. And in that dark haze, they fight against you and me and anything that gets in the way. But we have true vision through Jesus Christ. We have that glory. We have that anticipation. So let's quit looking gloomy gusts of Christians. Let us celebrate because we see the mountain and we're going there. Amen. Amen. Now I hear a great big amen because the pastor's done. <laughs> But I do encourage each one of you to keep pressing towards that mountain. Look towards the mountain when you are discouraged. When we take our eyes off the mountain of God and what he has promised, and for, forget what he has already done, we lose sight of everything. We need that hope. We need that love. And that only comes through salvation, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, I want to thank you for this time that we could just gather here this morning to hear from your word, to hear how your servants are ministering in this world and how you have ministered to at least one person individually. You have saved lives, you have saved a soul, and you are speaking to our souls now. Help us to work out our salvation according to your grace and knowledge and to stay the course without varying to the left and the right. Let us always have a song in our hearts and scripture in our mouth. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. In Christ's wonderful name, amen. amen. Shall we stand and sing our closing song? While we sing, if you would like to know more about this